Hello, I'm Mario Taniguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast. Today, joining me on Calgary's podcast is Addie Dutta, who is a co-owner of Monkey Breakfast Club and Bistro in Calgary. Thanks for joining us today, uh, Addie. Thank you, Mario, for having me over. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the company first, and uh, then we'll talk a bit about your journey to to there. But um, tell me what Monkey is and, and what you guys do. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Monkey is essentially an eclectic breakfast place. You know, the breakfast scene in, in Calgary or in Canada in general uh, was limited to the old breakfast options you would get at home, but now you get in the restaurant. So we thought, you know what, we, we are going to do some monkey business with the, with the old classics and, and do something different uh, whilst keeping the flair of the traditional food. That's what we do. We serve breakfast, we serve lunch, and uh, that's how we were founded. We have grown in it and we have served uh, over 200,000 people so far. So uh, first one was opened uh, when? Uh, in, two, in 2016 is when we took over and 2012 is when it was founded. Oh, okay then. Uh, so you took over an existing uh, business. Yes. And so uh, currently there are three locations uh, in Calgary, correct? That is correct. We just opened our third one. Yeah. And uh, so what's uh, what's uh, the plan for the future uh, for, for Monkey? Yes, we uh, since 2016, we have had the... We've had a strong push from customers and then few investors as well to, to expand. We've put the brakes on it up until now. We wanted to hone in and, and really see what we do well. We found that, we've been validated, and now we are looking to open at least two more immediately in Calgary and then go for our national expansion, uh, primarily in Toronto, Vancouver, and Edmonton. Okay, why do you think... Um the brand will resonate out there with customers? The customers particularly, we find that, um, take, take big cities, for example, Toronto. Um, it's such a massive international destination, one of the top cities in, in North yeah. America. And we're just surprised that the number of breakfast options, so we're talking top end, not just, not just uberly expensive, but somewhere where you go and you get chefy kind of meal, not many options available in Toronto. So we think that people are trendy. They love getting great food. They want, they want to feel going for breakfast as if they're going for dinner. Yeah. And that's why we think we can give that atmosphere to them. We can give them the food and we can give them the service. Yeah. Breakfast has sure changed over years, hasn't it? Right. Uh, from the, uh, the standard, uh, you know, uh, uh, two eggs and uh, toast and uh, a couple of slices of bacon. <laughs> uh, certainly, certainly. I mean, uh, I sometimes get that too. But I tell you, after eating that couple of times, I do want to try something else. And s s suddenly you realize that breakfast options are as elegant and as nice looking as dinner options. So why not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So tell me how you got here, uh, you know, as a co-owner of this company. Like, uh Talk a little bit about your journey, Addy. Yeah, long journey. I, I, I was born and raised in India, and I came to Canada as an international student. I went to McGill University for my engineering degree in Montreal. Yeah. Uh, Montreal set a tone for what a uh, city with many, many, in fact, most number of restaurants would look like. Yeah. I come from a, from a family that's fond of food. Um, I have my sister lingering around today. She's visiting us from Chicago. And I tell you, the first conversation uh, when she landed today was about food. <laughs> uh, so, so food was, was important. Uh, as an engineer, I thought that I, I would, that would be my professional outlook and, and set the tone for the rest of my life. But that wasn't to be. I ended up becoming a business uh, management consultant with Deloitte. And over years, I realized that after touching many industries, the one industry I really never worked in was food, food industry. So me and my university buddy, uh, we quit our jobs. He's, he was an investment banker and we opened up a food truck. And <laughs> that food truck just did super well. It was, it was gourmet street food from Germany that we were serving. 
and Calgary, Calgarians, we have a strong uh, rooted community from Germany, Poland, Ukraine. So we thought that this would resonate well with them and it did. Uh, we expanded that to two food trucks until the city changed the bylaws. Uh, and that didn't stop our interest in food and let alone let it be our, our professional uh, future as well. So we took over Monkey, uh, which was the, the, the previous owners, lovely owners. They, they wanted to part ways. They wanted to do other things. We yeah. thought this, this, is, this is a brand where we go to and others should know about as well. And that's the journey that took us to Monkey. We never looked back. It's, it's been just incredible uh, since taking over Monkey. Well, okay, I got to ask you, like, uh, with a background uh, in engineering, uh, yeah. you, what are the things that you learned, uh, you know, through uh, engineering and, and the business world that uh, kind of uh, works well for you as a, you know, as a co-owner of a, of a food place? Yeah, that's a very good question. In fact, I get asked that often, like, how is an engineer behind this uh in this kitchen going to serve me eggs benedict and i did cook for a while uh, <laughs> i would say uh, i'll speak for the world of engineering we are we are trained uh, primarily to be conscientious so whatever mm -hmm. we do we have to do well i i, I will quote my my professor th my uh, thermodynamics professor uh, saying uh, you know next time you're in the aircraft and you're sitting at the window and you're looking at that wing you sure hope that the engineer who designed the wing did a good job, didn't you? <laughs> Wouldn't you? And that resonated with me so well. So we were taught to whatever you do, do it well, otherwise don't do it. Yeah. When we got into the restaurant industry or any industry for that matter, along in our life, we realized that as long as you know what has to be done, how it has to be done, then it's just a matter of doing it properly. Hmm. So I would say after the quick training sessions of how to cook in a commercial setup, you know, you yeah. cook at home, I cook at home. I know you, you're fond of food. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cooking at home is one meal or one type of meal you're cooking. In a restaurant, imagine you've got 10 hungry kids and you've got 20 moms and dads waiting for the food and they all have different ideas of what they want to eat. Cooking all of that at the same time took a little bit of time. I would say a good six months. But I'm a backpacker. I travel the world and I travel for food. So I will go to different places, understand how they're cooking with the same ingredients. And in the end, it is just, I think it's just another language. So once mm. you once you kind of figure out so what is the syntax of the language, then you go ahead. So I think engineering allows engineers to problem solve things in a much different manner rather than thinking that oh i'm since i'm not a cook i cannot cook yeah 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 no i hear you so um you know when when you first started uh on uh you know as a, as a business owner what was the uh, biggest challenge you had to overcome all right yeah that goes to engineering too <laughs> so I I assumed, in fact, both of us, uh, me and the business partner, Kashik, we assumed that uh, almost everyone is conscientious <laughs> <laughs> until, until we took over the business and we realized that our motivations of cooking great food uh, at the right time with the right quantity and the price may not be the same motivation for someone we just hired. Maybe they just want to do their nine to five and go home and that's it. Uh, this was a big learning lesson for us that we have to find like-minded people. We mm. thought that if we just get people who have worked in great restaurants would, would suffice and be a great team to support us. Uh. Instead, we ended up building a training program, which helped us figure out a simple example uh, to figure out whether this person fits the job or not. For example, speed. We call it every person who comes into a breakfast place is hangry. <laughs> they are hungry and they're angry and they haven't eaten and they want their food now. Yeah. So what we thought is if we make a person, instead of asking where you worked, uh, some theoretical questions, if we gave them 40 pounds or 20 pounds of potatoes and we say, go ahead 
and cut it and just time it. And if they are, they are cutting these potatoes at the same rate as an existing staff, they are great. Second, can they be trained if they are not? If yeah. they're not, if they are kind of slow, but we feel that they can be trained and they're showing signs of, of lear learning, sponge mentality, that I'll come and I'll yeah. understand whatever you're doing. Uh, that's, that's when we started making our decisions at the onset, followed by the training of giving them specific metrics as to what our expectation is so that it gives them the best chance to get there. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, you've moved around and you lived in a couple of different places. And uh, what do you like about Calgary uh, as a, from a business perspective of, and being a, a business owner? Mm -hmm. Calgary, I find, has a penchant for entrepreneurs. Yeah. So now within entrepreneurs, you can say uh, people or entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs rather. So if they want to... Let's say we get lots of immigrants. We get lots of migrants within Canada. Mm -mm. Generally, the people who get attracted, just like I came to Calgary, is because of a job opportunity, being close to the mountains, so better health, better life. So they have, ha they have made a conscious decision of something better in their life beyond just money. So they say, yeah. hey, this is a great job opportunity. I could never get this anywhere else. Of course, it pays. Once, once we see people applying with that kind of mindset, money, of course, you have to be competitive. You can almost get money anywhere for the same type of job. But what is the quality of the job that you're going to get? We find Calgary is young. It attracts entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. We have had people who worked at Monkey and went on to open their own bakeries or restaurants, which is incredible, right? They give their best one year, two years of their life to us. We discuss it at the start and off they go. That's what we rather rather get than people or staff, which is just lingering around. Mm, I think that's one big human factor is a big factor in Calgary, other than the, the whole meat industry and the, the fact that we have such good organic meat coming from the local farms. The yeah. type of uh, food we give to cattle is so different than what you get south of the border and such you know here it's grass raised mostly whereas uh, elsewhere it's all corn which doesn't sit well in their stomachs and and whatnot interesting so uh, you're also a, a a business coach are you not yes i am yeah can you talk a little bit about that uh addy just said and what you do there certainly so uh I'm a firm believer of one. That means everything comes together as one in life. Yeah. So personal, you know, you can't, you can't just switch on and off your personal and your professional. So what that means is that if, if let's say you, you feel that right now you don't feel enough confidence in getting out in the world, uh, be it dating, be it uh, your hobby, and you're struggling there and whatnot, you're almost guaranteed you're going to struggle in your professional life as well. Mm. So what happened over time is I got blessed with, with folks around me who, who really did believe that I was doing something great and I could help them, especially from my consulting background. Uh, lots of startups reached out, uh, specifically one e-commerce North accelerator program. I remember recently that I did, uh, they, they, they select top 10 uh, startups in the tech industry and they hired me to help them with strategy. Uh, likewise, I get lots of independent applicants who come over and, and want to talk about how can I make my big business bigger, but they recognize that you, there are small changes in life that you have to do on a personal front that also help you in your business journey, entrepreneurship journey, or even at your work, if you're working for someone else. This kind of mentality, I don't think exists as much as it should. And the fact that th that's the kind of service I offer, uh, I've been blessed for people to, to come over and, and, and seek that advice that how can I just be a better person overall and manage my family, my work together. Okay. So, uh... You know, if you had a, a young person come up to you uh, seeking advice, 
uh, you know, they wanted, they had an idea, they, they want to be an entrepreneur. What would you tell them? The first question is why? Why do you want to do what you're pitching me to do? Is there an, is there a right answer? Uh, the right answer remains in them. Yeah. So the whole journey. So for example, the next two, three sessions will be to uncover whether your internal answer that you truly believe is it the same that's coming out of your mouth? Mm. And I'll give you an example. Recently, I had the chance of working with a fantastic lady. She started, uh, she, she did a, um, a startup and she wanted to change the world through the product. Well, it all turned out that the reason why she was doing that was to give a better financial life for her parents. Uh -huh. So the money that she will make out of it and whatnot but it was not the product. So that means if I switch over the product and I give you money in a different way, would you take it? And the answer was yes. So it's extremely important that why you're doing what, you, what you're saying you're about to do, is it your, your own internal truth? That mm -hmm. is the right answer. Uh, and uncovering that is very important, be it your personal or your, um, your professional eye. I mean, I've had many startups and I can tell you that, you know, I want to be the next billion dollar company. Yes, we all in the entrepreneurial world want to get to the, to the next 500 million, yep. 7 million or 1 billion. Yes, some of course I say, what is good enough for them? Uh, that's another example I had. A startup, uh, uh, there was husband and wife and they said, my good enough is about 5 million a year of revenue. My family will, will survive well and we will make a positive impact in the world because their product was uh, was environmentally sustainable alternative to what we currently use. Yeah, I found that fascinating. After, after discovery sessions of about four discovery sessions, we realized that that's the honest truth. Hmm. So for that person to go seek money from venture capitalists would not make any sense. Instead, you should go to the bank. You should go to friends, you should go to family. And they did. So this is the, the magic of once you find your path that you honestly and truly believe in, everyone else will see the genuine intent behind it. Yeah. And they'll follow you. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Adi, uh, when you're not doing your business coaching or running a business uh, uh what are your interests and I, I know you you mentioned cooking and and traveling <laughs> uh the, tell me a little bit about what you, what you like about those two areas and anything else you like to do yes yes um <clears throat> i actually recently sold my camper van so i spent a lot of time in the camper van <laughs> uh, i am traveling with my wife my recently married wife to Germany and we are going to buy a camper van there and travel around. So I would say um, exploring geographical uh, locations uh, by driving around uh, and, and spending in nature for that area is, some, yeah. is of big interest. Uh, number two, uh, I love spending time with my dog. Uh, we rescued a dog a couple months back and oh, yeah. she She's uh, quite a project uh, and seeing that little change, I, I tell you the last uh, two and a half months, we've spent hours a day on her. At some point we were about losing hope that you know we will never be able to take her out from her negative past and her to think that world is a better place. And suddenly last week, she's actually sitting right below me, so I'm looking at her. Uh, <laughs> last week she showed such positive signs and it just, paid for all the effort that went in. So I would say uh, learning dog language and dog world yeah. was traveling is something that really intrigues me. And cooking, of course. Yes, of course you have to. Hey, listen, Mario, you, you're going to throw a whole bunch of random things onto a pan anyways, right? So might as well pick those that might just go well with each other. Yeah. Is there any type of food you like to cook more than other? Uh -huh. I do love my my home food, which is Indian food. I yeah. call it food back home <laughs> uh, because it's a whole bunch of uh, spices. On the other hand, I like uh, Central and Southern Italian food. 
primarily because of its uh, of its past with the spice route of the silk route with the spices they used to get from there. So they end up uh, having a nice concoction of, of many spices beyond the pizzas that we know of Germany. I mean, it's just fantastic, uh, of, of Italy. Uh, uh, so I find Italian food quite interesting. My next one to learn is German food. My wife is German, but she herself doesn't like it. So that's a bit of a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the little sticky notes she makes for me everywhere about what's the translation in German for everything <laughs> around me. So I would say that's. <laughs> well, that's excellent. Uh, so, you know, when you look back, uh, Addy, you, uh, you seem quite content and happy, right? With that decision you you made to, to leave that corporate world behind, I guess, and uh, and to become an entrepreneur yourself. Yeah, uh, although I have to say, I hear this a lot. Uh, I, I listen to podcasts, I go to events, and I hear about be your own boss, leave the corporate world and be an entrepreneur. I don't see enough conversation around you leaving the corporate world, but now when you become an entrepreneur, technically you're providing a new corporate world to someone else. Yeah. Because someone else is working in your company now. Yeah. So corporate isn't all that bad. It's about what is the right corporate, a right environment. So if you left an environment that you didn't like, as an entrepreneur, you are gifted with authority to make that change, to make that corporate world good for the people who are joining in yeah. into yeah. your company. So I I look back and I say that's the best decision I made. I still have the opportunity. Uh, my friends, my ex-colleagues are in touch with me. They always bring opportunities. I can go back. Um, I feel where I am today is just incredible. When our employees or team members come to us and tell us they absolutely love, of course, not everybody has loved working with us either. And that's just fine. That's just the nature. You know, we have marriages, we have divorces for the yeah. same reason. As long as it's uh, it's not hostile, it is it is a good decision for both parties. I believe um, if we continue to do that way, the way we have done it, even though the the progression of the growth will be slower. I told you two locations. I didn't tell you twenty locations next yeah. year, and that's absolutely fine. So I would say the journey has been incredible, and. Uh, uh, I learned my lessons. I wish I have more lessons to 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 learn because that keeps it interesting. And uh, yeah, so move accordingly. All right, wonderful. Well, thanks, uh, Addy, for joining us today. Thank you, Mario. Uh, it's lovely talking to you. And uh, yeah, you. Uh, I, it's always good to chat with you, to meet you in person. So I'm looking forward to meeting you next time. All right, wonderful. That was uh, Addy Dutta, who is co-owner of uh, Monkey Breakfast Club and Bistro in Calgary. I'm Mario Tonaguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast, today on Calgary's Podcast. Thanks for joining us.